I took my time picking out the straightest one by two pieces of oak I could find at the local box store, which is a challenge unto itself. No! And I took that over to my miter saw and cut four lengths at eight and a half inches and four lengths at five and a half inches, knowing I'd cut it down to the final size later. I took shallow passes while cutting this to avoid tear out. I took two pieces of the eight and a half inch and two pieces of the five and a half inch over to the router table to cut a one quarter inch by one half inch rabbit. I did this in two passes. I take all my pieces over to the miter saw and cut off one end at 45 degrees. I then can set up a stop block with an opposing 45 degree angle at the distance that I need to keep my pieces aligned so that they turn out to be the same length. I got this package in the mail from Great Britain. There's only one person I know that is over there that'd be sending me something. And that is Jack from Everyman Builds. He has a great channel. I might have to open this box, but it's got a picture of a router on it. So I'm not sure he sent me a box. I took the pieces that did not have rabbits over to the table saw and cut them down to about one inch width. I quickly made a jig to be able to cut the dowels accurately and safely by cutting a V down a board. I used table saw. I set the blade at an angle. I ran the board through, turned the board around, ran it back through, creating a V for the dowels to sit in while they're being cut. I attached my dowel cutting jig to my table saw sled. There's a video on the channel on how I made this sled. With the jig on there, I can raise the blade to the right height, push the sled, and the saw will cut the dowel, but the dowel is safely in the canal created with that V we cut. I carefully marked where I wanted to put dowels, making sure that they lined up between the pieces with rabbits and the pieces without. And then I went to the drill press and I drilled half inch holes, about three eighths of an inch deep. The rules for this Secret Santa collaboration were pretty simple. Make a box with any kind of wood that you want. And we randomly selected who we'd send our boxes to. So everyone got a box and we're sharing them on YouTube. Back over at the dowel cutting jig, we used the wedge that we cut out of the jig as a stop block. We apply some glue, set it, and we can let this set up while we go work on something else. It's now glue up time and I'm going to go with the painter's tape method. I laid out my frog tape and applied wood glue to the end grain on each piece within a frame and then was able to basically roll up the frame and allow the tape to be the clamp. Jake from the Make With Jake channel is the recipient of this box. I really hope he likes it and he's doing fantastic work. I think you should go check out his channel. There will be links to Make With Jake and all the other channels in the description. Now that we have a stop block, we can square up the end of our dowels, put it up against the stop block, and then make cuts. I find it best to cut off the saw between cuts so that blade is not coming across the dowel again. I found out the hard way that the half inch oak dowels don't fit the half inch holes. To solve this problem, I went to my table saw and table saw sled once again. I fixed the sled to the table saw with a clamp where the edge of the fence was at the highest point of the table saw blade. I then adjusted the blade so it was barely above the surface of the table saw sled and fixed a stop block to prevent me going too far up on my dowels. I then could slightly turn the height of the blade as I needed to, to adjust so that the dowels would fit into the frames we built. It's now time to take the painter's tape off of the frames. I like to go over it with mineral spirits, the entire project. And then after that dries, give it a good sanding. I used Odie's oil on this project. As I went along, I applied it to areas that would be hard to get to later, as long as they were not surfaces that would be glued. 
Here's the fun part where I get to play with glue and get to put a little glue in each hole that was drilled and then place the dowels in them so that the best looking side is facing outward and then go to the other frame, put glue in it, each of the holes. And then the really fun part, figure out how to get all this to come together. I get some quarter inch thick oak, set the table saw blade at 45 degrees and cut down some side panels. As I've snuck up on a perfect fit, I take them back into a dry fit. I want to make sure that they fit just inside the top frame and they are inside the lower frame on top of the rabbit. You got to love it when a plan comes together. I just have to mark where to cut each piece. This is another time when it's better to make your cuts leaving a little bit of length so that you can come back and cut trim it again, sneaking up on a perfect fit. I thought it was looking good at this point, but I thought the side panels behind the dowels were just looking bland. So I decided to give them a light burn so that grain would really pop. But I really wanted to be careful not to overdo it here. Oh yeah, when you said box, I was thinking, what is he going to come up with? It's now time to glue the panels into place. Just a little bit of glue on the inside of the frame and on the rabbit should do it. Notice that there's a fifth piece cut that will serve as the bottom of the box. So I'd cut two pieces of quarter inch oak, one to serve as the bottom, which was glued to the rabbit, and the other I'm going to glue to the lid. I use this old and proven method so I can position this piece of quarter inch oak on the lid. Now when I lift the box, everything will be in place. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Well, that didn't work. Let's try it again. Now it's as easy as marking it with a pencil, removing the tape, and gluing it up. After the glue is set, I remove the clamps, and I use some double-sided carpet tape to affix the lid to the box. Keep in mind that I cut the lid out of a single piece of oak, and I cut it slightly oversized to the box. Over at the router table, I can use a flush trim bit to trim the lid to the exact dimensions of the box. That sawdust can build up quick. While the double saw tape still holds the box lid in place, I run a 45 degree chamfer all the way around the box lid. I raised the bit in between passes so that I wasn't taking off too much material at one time. It's time to give the lid a good sanding. And then we will apply Odie's oil to the lid and to the entire box. After the oil sits for a little while, you can buff it out with a rag to give it a nice sheen. I like the way this box turned out. It's meant to be a pedestal gift box, meaning that you can put something inside of it and then it will serve as a pedestal so you can display something on top of it. So if you put this on a shelf, you can put something on top. So this package arrived in the router box. Let's open it up and see what Jack from Everyman Builds sent us. He's got enough tape on here. It could have crossed two oceans. I hope I don't cut the router while I'm open this. Oh my goodness, look at this. Must be a trick to getting it open. Oh, there's something written here. I hear my wife calling. I gotta go. That's perfect. Wow, this thing has a magnet. That's what it is. Look at these details. So other than the inscription here, which is even feels great to the touch, there's magnets on each corner. I'd like to know how he did that because you don't see a magnet on this side, but whenever you put it on there, you feel the magnets catch. Let's see what's inside. Hey, look at here. He included Murray's Pure Australian Beeswax. I use this on my beard. I mean, 
Come on. You know. Thank you, Jack. That looks great. Make sure to subscribe for more videos. Click one of these links to go watch one of my other videos. And my wife's calling. I got to go.